Hello, as you can see today I will do a comparison review. I will I want to summarize the current state in the world of Android digital audio players. It's kind of uh, Android dub state of the union end of summer 2019. There are a few interesting models that will hit the market really soon. Hebe will release uh, R5, uh, Ibasso will release DX160, so few interesting models will be coming too and I think I will create a separate review for them for mid-tire, but today I've selected the dubs that I've had. Uh, it's Fio M11, Astel and Kern, uh, Norma, Kane and 6 Mark II, Hebe R3 uh, R6 Pro and Ibasso DX220. So I missed few dubs, uh, for example Fio X7 Mark II, it's still available and it's still good, but you know, I think it can be considered outdated, but because Fio will soon re release M11 Pro in the same price range and I think it will beat X7 uh, at the end. Also non-pro version of uh, R6, uh, but it's inferior in terms of sound compared to R6 Pro, so I left only R6. Uh, only pro version I left to represent the Hebe lineup and uh, Ibasso DX200. Uh, uh, also, I think it's, well, maybe not outdated, but it's discontinued, so we will use DX220. Of course, some models are also available on the uh, on the third party market, some units are available second hand, also there is, uh, there is Ibasso DX150, but it will be also outdated and replaced by DX160, so I didn't include the, it in, to, in, this, in, in this comparison too. Maybe I missed some other models like uh, Sony for example, but I just don't have them. So here is five models that I've got uh, that are more or less recent. None of them are new, but anyway. I, I uh, used to call such reviews shootout in the past, but as someone noticed uh, in the comments, uh, shootout means that I will nominate which one is best, which one is worse, and so on. But I won't do that, you know, because I got the dub that I like uh, the most subjectively. But it doesn't mean that it's best, because they all are pretty good, and it's a matter of your preferences and the matter of your subjective tastes, which one will be the best for you. I will try to say which I recommend to each taste, but it's probably the maximum that I can do. So I won't do any top 10 lists or name the best, name the kings, you know, it's not my my sin, I don't do that and it's my decision. And now, and also of course I won't do a full detailed review of each dub, it's more like an overview. Each of them I reviewed in the past and I will put a link into the description, so if you will be interested in some more detailed, more in-depth look, you are welcome to visit the link. And now let's move on. So let's move in price ascending order and we'll start with Fio M11. Really recent addition to the Fio lineup and actually a big step forward for the company. Finally they found the perfect uh, solution for the, all their uh, previous issues. They found they are now using Snapdragon chipset They've put 3 GB of RAM here and now it's lightning fast dub with a pretty stable Android 7 and it's packed with uh, tons of modern features. So let's start with some of these controls. I really like this case for M11, it's made by DD Hi-Fi. So USB-C for charging, quick charge is supported. Uh, Work time is more than 12 hours from single-ended out and more than 8 hours from balanced out and like 40 hours and more wirelessly. Fio put all possible output, so you will have single-ended and both uh, Pentacon and 2.5 mm balanced out. Uh, it supports quick charge, so it's of course all of them are working as digital tonal converters and all other modern features are present here. Two microSD cards and about 25 gigabytes of uh, built-in flash available to user. Playback 
controls here, play pause, volume control. Also, it actually really has really efficient implementation of sleep. You don't have to turn it off completely. It's not wasting battery in sleep mode. On off button and that's it. All hardware controls are present and it's working nice. Also, pretty good screen, big 720p resolution. So player is relatively big, so it's not as small as, for example, X53 or other stuff. So it's one of the biggest dubs in this comparison, but it's pretty thin, so it's fitting nicely into pocket. Screen nice, good viewing angles, good resolution. You, they're using their recent version of their firmware based on the Android 7 and their own digital audio player. Pretty convenient, lot of features, as usual, Bluetooth with all supported codecs, Wi-Fi, everything that you want you will have. Logical media library organization, convenient player software, pretty reliable work. As usual, here implemented two modes, pure music and Android. And the only disadvantage, actually, it's uh, lacking of uh, Google Play services. Google uh, doesn't allow uh, installing Google Play uh, on the Android 7, and here used Android 7, so no Google Play here, but you can install software from APK, or you can install some third-party uh, services like APK Pure to install it, but besides that it's fully open Android, so you can install all software, streaming, uh, Tidal, offline, Spotify, everything is supported, working pretty nicely and pretty reliably. In terms of sound, here used two AK4493 digital tonal converters and really powerful amplifier. It's uh, about uh, 200 milliwatts for 32 ohms load from single-handed output and more than 500 milliwatts for 32 ohms load from balanced. Player is natural for those who prefer uncolored resolving sound uh, and it has good resolution. Of course, it's lacking a bit of uh, extension, not extension, but it, it lacking a bit of luxury on treble and bass could be a bit more weighty, but at the same time you can uh, minimize that by selecting proper headphones or earphones and it won't be an issue. Its price is $450 and for such a feature-packed device uh, with such a good resolving and sound and so lot of power, it's a really great choice. Actually, it's probably one of the best or simply the best player in this price range with Android. So. I think that actually this player triggered uh, the attention from the iBasso and from the Hebe and actually that's the reason of uh, fast development of uh, DX160 and R5. So it's the best, currently the best mid-tire player I think in terms of features and sound. Or at least one of the best, but actually I don't remember any better dub, at least for now. Next player is Aston Kern SR15 or as it called Norma. Its, its price is $700 and of course it's a bit of Aston Kern tax including this price because it's the smallest dub and in this uh, in this review but of course it's one of the nicest traditionally. Here Aston Kern used really brave idea with tilted screen and uh, I really like that. And in terms of features, here use the uh, Cyrus Logic uh, 43198, if I remember right, uh, as digital tonal converter. It's not the most powerful, of course, in terms of uh, power. It's 4 volts RMS from single-ended output and uh, actually 2 volts from single-ended output and 4 from the balanced out. Work time is from uh, starts from 8 hours to about 10, depending on load. Of course, it's signature design, it's extremely stylish, all that uh, tilts, all that triangles. So, micro SD slot, it has 64 GB of built in memory and single micro SD slot, and uh, three buttons for uh, playback control, headphones output, and uh, uh, 
of power on and the lock button starting to forget the words and uh, volume control so really nice uh, basic but stylish design screen resolution is 800 by 400 80 points and it has nice viewing angles of course nice resolution everything no usb-c regular micro usb but of course it can be used as digital to analog converter it has wi-fi it has bluetooth but bluetooth is limited to aptx and aptx hd codecs uh, here used android operation system but actually don't no one knows the exact version because here used highly customized Aston Kern launcher, it's, uh, it gives you all that uh, unified experience with all other Aston Kern apps. You can install third-party firmware, but it's limited to whitelist apps only, but all streaming services are present there, some players, some additional software, so you can install it and you can use it. Also here works Tidal Offline and other stuff like that, but no Google Play services of course. In terms of sound, well, actually it's, uh, how to say it, probably it's uh, the simplest player in this review. Of course it has nice resolution, It ha the most important feature here it has Aston Kern's signature liquid mids, but of course in terms of driving power, in terms of controls, uh, all other dubs here are better than uh, Aston Kern, but of course it's uh, not uh, bad in, at all. It's like, and the difference isn't big and if you like uh, colored uh, mids and if you like Aston Kern signature representation it would be a nice dub for you. It's perfect with in-ear monitors because it has the blackest background and it ha well maybe not the blackest but it has a good black background and it drives in-ear monitors really good. For full-size cans uh, for sensitive and ones and with normal sensitivity it will be okay too. So you know it, it's not right to say that it's the worst dub in terms of sound here because it's really good but uh, if we took neutrality as our main objective of course other dubs will be better. But uh, Anyway, it's really enjoyable player and I really like it. It's the smallest and the most pocketable, so partially uh, they have to take measures to limit its power consumption, of course. But anyway, it's pretty stylish and one of the best uh, dubs uh, if we select uh, sound quality to size ratio. So in this, uh, in, among all the other small dubs, it's one of the best, definitely. Next one is probably the most stylish dubs in this review, or at least one of the most stylish, it's a Hebe R6 Pro. Made of stainless steel, it's really pleasant in, in terms of uh, experience, you know, it's, it's a bit on the heavy side, it's heavier than all other dubs, but you know, it feels really solid and looks really attractive. Glass on the back panel, glass on the front panel, superior build quality. Just take a look. Tray for micro SD slots, 32 gigabytes of uh, built-in flash, volume control, output headphone and line out. For balanced output here used Pentacon, on-off button with indicator and volume playback. As you can see everything is done really really nicely like some Swiss watch. USB-C for charging, quick charge is supported, of course it works as USB digital converter, it supports external DACs and DACs or how it should be pronounced, digital tonal converters and so on. Price is $800 or $820 if you want a stock case, so in terms of design looks really good. Work time is about 8 hours from balanced out and uh, about uh, 11 hours or so or even 12 from the single-ended. It's really powerful, 250 milliwatts per channel from the single-ended output and up to 750 milliwatts from the balanced out. Here used dual, uh, dual Sabre uh, 1928Q2M uh, for the conversion and 
operational amplifiers used Muses and OPA, if I remember right. So pretty nice in terms of sound. As the operation system here used Android 8.1 and here Google Play services are available. Main screen has resolution 1280 1, by 668 or something like that. I can make some mistake in, in figures so basically minimal minimal set of applications but it's full featured open android of course here you you will have wi-fi bluetooth all codecs including ldc and all other features that you can expect also screen is pretty nice bright good viewing angles and so on as a player here use the Hebe music, you've pro most probably you've seen it before many times, a lot of features, uh, everything uh, as you can expect. And one of signature features is MSEB, kind of equalizer, but instead of tweaking frequencies you just changing sound, warmer, darker, cooler, brighter, light, bass or deep and so on. So really nice and convenient way to tweak the sound and to tune it. What else I can say about it? Also really efficient in, turn in sleep mode, so everything that you can expect from modern Android digital audio player. In terms of sound signature, it's a bit uh, shifted towards uh, warmer sound, not as warm as uh, our regular R6, but a bit recessed treble to create experience for those who don't like harsh sound. And it's a bit of has a bit of warmth on the mids and on the bass, so weighty representation with a bit of additional weight. Perfect for those who like such tuning, for those who want uh, not fatiguing sound, for those who like uh, more weight, more authority and all other uh, and uh, similar signature. Perfect for, for example, for jazz, for some vocal and so on. Really powerful, can drive almost anything, really feature-packed, uh, has really advanced firmware, Hebe is well known for creating efficient firmware, so R6 Pro. Next one is Ibasu DX220, its price is $900 and for such a feature-packed device it's also really great price. Of course it's all the prices are expensive, but it's what we've got on the digital audio players market. So. Ibasu really managed to put a lot inside of this uh, player. Here used 8-core ROC chip as a chipset, uh, 4GB of uh, RAM, 32GB uh, of flash memory. What else they've used here? As a digital tonal converter here used dual uh, Sabre 1928, but not the mobile version like in Hebe, but uh, pro version desktop. And uh, also they used XMOS uh, chip as a USB transport. It's improving sound and it allows a lot of advanced features. Also it's built of aluminium, pretty nice design. So, and also it features replaceable amplifiers. So Ibas already created a lot of um, amplifiers actually 10 or I don't remember the exact count, so starting from Amp1 to Amp9, including tweaked version A Amp1 Mark II, so a lot of them. So you can swap them and get different sound. There are different versions with pentacon, with single-ended output, there are, uh, there are two versions with discrete amplification and even Amp9 recently released with the new tube tube amplification. So, a lot of features, a lot of possibilities. Single micro SD slot, USB-C for charging to use it as digital tonal converter, quick charge is supported. Work time is about 8 hours, but actually it depends on the amplifier model and on the load, because here used really powerful digital tonal converter and pow powerful amplifiers, they are really hungry, so sometimes you can get uh, 6 or 7 hours, sometimes more than uh, 9 hours, but it depends. SPD on off button, volume control and uh, playback buttons. So to replace amplifier just lose uh, these two screws and uh, replace it. Stock um, amp has balanced output 2.5 mm, phone out and line out. So 
pretty stylish, I think, but of course the, one of the most significant and distinguishing features is the screen. It's a gorgeous screen with 1080p resolution, so it's kind of new dimension for the mobile, for the player's screen. Great viewing angles, great brightness, 2.5D glass, really nice looking, really superb, crisp, clean and bright. As the operation system here used Android 8.1, but without Google Play services, uh, probably I also decided not to deal with Google to achieve the certification. But luckily there is third-party firmware by Lurker, it's free, you can install it and you will have uh, Google Play services and a lot of other really important tweaks. Built-in player is Mango player, it's really nice pretty stylish in terms of design and in terms of features and uh, what is really good here it has great uh, parametric equalizer so you can uh, really tweak sound whatever you like and it's not uh, intrusive and it's not changing sound much of course you will have uh, all bluetooth codecs like oh, it here used bluetooth 5.0 the most recent version so also it will be good in this aspect stock amplifier is really powerful 3 volts rms from single ended output and up to 6.2 volts rms from balanced out so crazy lot of power and ibasso's signature tuning natural resolving monitoring representation but uh, not as natural as uh, fio one just a bit shifted towards the more musical representation i think actually stock dx200 was absolutely clinical and natural so zero coloration and in the x220 probably they tweaked amplifier a little bit and that means that mark ii to be a bit more engaging, a bit more weighty, so just a bit colored. But of course, there are a lot of options of tweaking sound using this amplifier model. So, DX220 for those who want maximum sonic performance, uh, and for those who are okay with a bit reduced uh, uh, work time. Also, it's a bit slower than all other tabs because here used big screen and not so advanced a modern chipset. I can totally live with it, but some people complain. But I think it's the price that you can pay for the great screen and for the great sound. The last one, but of course not the least one, it's Kane N6 Mark II or N6 second generation. Kane uh, he has a great experience in the desktop high-end and they they are on the market for many decades, so when they released their first uh, player N6, it was a pretty great uh, addition to the modest uh, dubs market of that time. But since that time passed a lot of uh, years, many, many years have passed, and for N6 second generation, they of course had to think, some, think uh, of something unusual. And they succeed in this manner, they created digital audio player with replaceable audio stage. So in, in iBASU you can swap amplifiers, but here you can replace digital tonal converter and clock uh, and amplification in all in one. So you just unscrew these two screws and you can remove them and replace. Second audio module is already in the work. It will be used a PCM digital tonal converter like classical N6. And I suppose they will do the similar tuning, but stock version of this player uses AK4497 digital tonal converter. And of course, it's really powerful in terms of amplification. So it gives you, it will give you 250 milliwatts for the 32 ohms load from single ended and more than 500 from the balanced out. As usual, here used Pentacon as the balanced out. So volume playback controls, on off button, and volume control at the same time, and USB C for charging and I2S out. It's pretty unusual feature to see it, so it's really good if, if you want to use it as a source as a, for the external digital tonal converter. As, as usual, here you, you will have quick charge and uh, all other features like 
uh, you can use it as digital tonal converter, you can output the signal to the external digital tonal converter both in via USB audio or via coaxial using special adapter and so on. Here Kain installed really huge battery, it's almost 6000 milliamperes per hour, so it will give you like 20 12 hours of work from balanced out and at least 13 from the single ended. But of course it depends on gain and on the load, but anyway it's uh, really long running. As a minus of this uh, solution, charge is really slow. Even with quick charge to, uh, to charge the battery from 10% to 90% will took you more than 100 minutes and full charge is about 4 hours or even more. 64 gigabytes of built-in uh, flash and micro SD card support, so a lot of uh, extensibility. Glass on the black on the back panel and glass on the front panel. As you can see, it's pretty bulky, it's bigger than all other dubs, uh, thicker, bigger, but it's a cost of big battery. Screen Actually, is it maximum brightness? Yeah, it's maximum brightness. Screen is probably the same that is used in the Hebe. It's uh, 2080 by, six, uh, by 768p. Nice viewing angles, uh, good brightness. It's responsible. Actually, Hebe is responsible for firmware here too. So, Android part is almost identical. So, almost zero differences. And same chipset here used uh, Snapdragon. So it's pretty fast, uh, pretty reliable, and you will have Google Play Store, you will have Bluetooth 4.2 version, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all Bluetooth codecs, LDAC, AAC, so everything. It can work as, as a transmitter and as a receiver, but as a receiver only SBC and LDAC you, uh, available. Two players, Hebe Music and Kane Music, they are almost identical, but Hebe Music has uh, uh, this MSEB equalizer and KN Music features uh, a bit different interface. You can change design here, similar to their i5 and N5 second generation. So, probably I told everything about the hardware and uh, speaking about the sound, it's the addition worse addition to the Kane signature lineup, it's signature sound of Kane, it's emotional with a bit highlighted emotions, with a bit added weight on the low frequencies, it's a bit step uh, from step back from the neutrality to towards the emotional side. If you like uh, highlighted emotions, if you like additional macro dynamics, if you like engaging sound signature, not the natural one, it's a great choice for you with a lot of connectivity, good firmware, and probably will see different uh, sound signatures and different tunings with the third party models. I don't remember, did I mention the price, but the price is $1,100. It's the most expensive, but uh, probably it will be the most, uh, uh, how to say it, the player that you can use for the long time, just replacing these modules and having a different sound. So, as you can see, Android dub market is developing really fast. We've got few interesting models coming, but even currently there are a lot of different absolute devices. All of them have uh, their pluses and minuses and choice isn't uh, that easy. But anyway, you know, you can get any of them. They all are really good. But of course, uh, to select the proper one, you just need to sync what sound signature do you like and basically if you answer to yourself answer this question uh, if you find yourself the answer to this question you can easily select the one that will suit you most so it was android dub state of the union to uh, and summer 2019 and thank you for attention